We've seen phones large enough to be tablets, but what about a phone almost as small as a watch? This So Yes mini Android phone is likely to be one of the smallest phones on the market. It's so small it fits in that weird tiny pocket in your jeans, measuring in at just 8cm tall, 4cm wide, and a centimetre thick. Despite its size, it even supports SD card expansion or a second SIM card. How do they pack it all in, and just how well does it work? To answer this, I purchased one from AliExpress for just 48 Aussie dollars, that's around 30 USD. It boasts a 1000 mAh battery, Android 6, 1 gig of storage and 8 gigs of RAM, but I'm sure that's supposed to be the other way around. Let's see what I really got. I've been scammed with fake specifications from almost every phone I've purchased from AliExpress. Will this one be the outlier? The box states the phone has a gig of RAM and 8 gigs of storage, so as I suspected, just a mistake in the listing. Included with the phone was a USB-C cable and this tiny clear case, along with a screen protector and SIM eject pin. Reading the manual, we can learn vital information such as root phone does not enjoy the warranty and don't use your phone while driving to avoid driving safety. I get it, English is hard, but the reviews from people and their dogs are mostly positive. So let's see what all that praise is about. I'll get the plastic protective films removed before we power up the phone. We're greeted by a welcome logo. Why do all these AliExpress phones have a similar startup logo? My guess is that they all use the same ROM with each distributor's tweaks. Unlike the fake iPhone and Samsung I purchased previously, they aren't spoofing the Android version or system hardware. But with a security patch from 2017 and a random custom ROM, I wouldn't go installing bank applications or other sensitive accounts. But what I did install was another launcher and Geekbench. For a cheap miniature phone, you can't expect much. But after taking 13 minutes to complete the benchmark, it scored only 1,133 on the multi-core score for Geekbench 4. So it's small and not very powerful, but what about usability? The entire screen is smaller than my phone's keyboard, and while you can hide the navigation buttons to get more screen real estate, they are already too close together so you often click the minimize button by mistake. Typing and key presses are the real challenge. Although I got better, it still requires a steady hand and precise taps. It can play back YouTube videos, however the screen is jittery during playback and the sound is both quiet and distorted. The bigger issue is navigation. With such a tiny screen, tapping on the minimize button wouldn't register, so I had to quit the whole browser. But with the phone running Android, you can install any apps compatible with Android 6. But just because they install doesn't mean they run well. With only 3G networking and a weak Wi-Fi chip, browsing the net is incredibly slow. But I'm sure there's a niche market out there for a very basic, very small phone. Despite its size, they still managed to fit multiple cameras, although I have a suspicion two of the rear ones are fake. We'll have to wait for the teardown to find out for sure. The video quality reminds me of phones from the mid-2000s. Even under the best condition, the quality is still poor, and the same goes with the front camera. With that, I think it's time to take a look inside. So it's over to the heat plate for this miniature phone before I begin prying up the back. Of course, it's all plastic, from the back panel to the touchscreen. But that doesn't mean it's unbreakable. I still managed to crack the back after slipping with one of my plastic picks. After all, this panel is less than a millimeter thick. Under the back panel is just more plastic. However, we now have access to the camera lenses. As I suspected, two of the cameras are fake. This seems to be common practice with these cheap phones. I guess this is only really done for aesthetics or to make the phone look more expensive than it really is. What I had hoped of being screws are just indentations in the plastic frame, so it appears to gain access to the internals. We'll have to open it from the other side. 
Thankfully, I don't have to try and separate the display layers, as I discovered the screen is just clipped into the rear panel. Working my plastic picks around the perimeter, I can release those clips. After the screen is free, I discovered only one screw holds the remainder of the internals into the housing. Its thread was damaged, so I had to apply upward force while unfastening the screw in order for it to come free. While disassembling the phone, I noticed a hidden button under the display. Powering up the phone, we can see what it does. As I suspected, it's a home button. I can't fathom as to why such a feature would be removed. This would make navigating the phone so much easier. I assume this motherboard is used in other similar phones, and the seller of this model decided not to use the built-in home button. With the display removed, we can begin to see the motherboard. On the other side is the 700 mAh battery, not a 1000 mAh battery as advertised. Also present is another hidden button, this one being a reset switch which can be pressed using a pin from the outside of the phone. Analyzing the internals further, I can't say as that I've ever seen a camera soldered onto the board before. On the other side, I can remove the speaker and battery to get a closer look at the rest of the motherboard. If China can squeeze an SD card reader on a phone smaller than the palm of my hand, I believe any maker of a regular size phone could do the same thing. The sticker on the motherboard does match the promoted hardware specifications, which is good to see. And unlike the front camera, the rear one is detachable. Not that I'd see many repair such a low powered device, it's still interesting to see how they managed to make it all work. The display cable really reminds me of an old iPod Nano screen. But now that we've seen the inside of this miniature phone, it's time we get it all back together, which is very easy thanks to the lack of modular components. Once we have the display pressed back into place, it's time for the camera lens and the two fake cameras to go back in for attaching the back panel into place. And we're done. So this is it. What might be one of the smallest Android phones ever made. It's not powerful, fast, or particularly that useful for me. But I'm sure if people are buying them, they have found a use case for a low cost mini phone. It came mostly as described except for the battery capacity. But given the unknown operating system and outdated software, I wouldn't be doing any sensitive work or logging into anything of importance on this device. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the Teardown and Repair Assessment playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.